You've also talked about um, the ATP and the WTA. Mm. Plenty of news in the last few days um, about potential mergers and getting tennis together. And you've got some pretty good and strong views on that. Yeah, look, it's, it's, a, it's, it's been interesting. Uh, all this time of not playing tennis has created a, a real um, momentum of tennis conversation. So obviously one of the, the, the big ones was um, spreading the wealth a little more. And the other big one to come out just, you know, just the other day was when Roger tweeted about potentially merging the, the ATP and the WTA tours. It's something that I would probably have to read up a little bit more on before I have a, a really strong opinion one way or the other. Um, right now, how it works, to my understanding, is um, you know they're two separate entities and, and they run two completely different business models also. Uh, so I think being a member of the Association of Tennis Professionals, um, I'm someone that would love to, to, to read up on it a little bit more and really um, get into the nuts and bolts of the finances also um, to see you know, how we're both um, running individually and how it would work uh, when it would, if it came together, how it would work as a merger. Um, that side of actually, the tennis actually really interests me. So it's something that I'm keeping an eye on, um, but it's something I also feel as if it's not as easy as just saying, okay, let's merge the two and, and so be it. I think there's lots of, of little details that they'd have to nut out before it becomes um, viable. Um, I guess that goes into a broader question too, where and, and you've been a really good spokesperson for the varying part of the, the tours, um, from the, the lower rank, the grassroots, up and into the top. And um, I suppose when we listen to your injuries and where you've come from, and, and, and I had a bit of a part to do with that early on too, uh, you know, your views on um, the fund that's been put together by the four majors, by the ATP, the WTA and the ITF, uh, are you are you pleased with that, and do you think we can get more done with that? Look, I, I've lived and experienced all the different levels of the tour life, futures, challenges, and the ATP. So I've I've had to live and experience that a couple of times that when I've come back from injuries, and and I know the hardships that's involved in tennis, and and how hard and difficult it can be. You know, in those lower rungs of tennis, you're playing for a hundred bucks each round, and the expenses that are involved uh, with our sport are so huge that it's just not viable. My biggest thing was, um, is why now? Um, and, and look, I, I, I will put my hand up and say, look, I've been one of the ones that's greatly benefited cracking into that top 100 and creating um, good financial stability. So I'll be the first one to admit, look, I, I've seen the prize money increases at the top end um, uh, levels of our sport has really benefited me. But I question why this hasn't been done earlier because I do feel as if this has been a problem that's you know been years and years in the making. And I don't think it should take a global pandemic that coronavirus is um, to address this. I feel as if it should have been addressed years ago. And I'm glad now people are starting to have that conversation. I think it's a few years too late, but okay, so be it. That's all well and good. Now that we're, we're discussing it and we're talking about it, let's move on and let's see and find ways that this can be a long-term solution, not just a short-term solution, but let's see how more people can make money out of tennis because that should be the, the big goal in my opinion. Let's not have just 100 players in the world making money. Let's see if we can create um, the top 300 players, 400 players being able to live off tennis and make a, you know, make a living out of the sport. I think that not only helps the players, but you know, if you're coaching, um, I think pl young players growing up see tennis as a real um, um, proper um, job then. Yeah, I mean, you're obviously very articulate and passionate. Would you ever move into the leadership in terms of the ATP and the player representation because you would have a, a good platform with, with your views here now? Look, I, I've been approached a, you know, a couple of times to, to run for, say, a player council. There were, especially in the, in the change before this one that we've seen right now, the, the players that were involved then. My biggest problem is, is, is you have to commit for, for three years. You know, you, as a player, you have a three-year term, and it's something that I am very interested in, um, the governance of the game. 
game. Um, I like the business administration side. It's something that's always, um, you know, kept me interested and engaged. For myself, though, personally, um, and with all my injury history, I felt as if uh, I couldn't confirm whether I could give three years of dedicated service because there was never a point in my career where I thought I had three years left. If I'm to be completely honest, I wasn't, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence in my body. Uh, so I only wanted to do it if I could do that at 100% for three years and I wasn't sure I could commit to that. But it is something in the future, whether it even be post-tennis, that um, being involved in the administration side of the game is something that greatly interests me. I think you I think you would be a good voice in that space. Um, before we, we finish, I want to talk a, a little bit about positivity, a little bit about tennis, because the start of the year uh, was pretty good for you. When you, we look at the Australian Open in particular, your epic five-set match with, with Roger, um, upper break, 2-1 in the fifth. And I've asked you this before, but I, I really liked your response to it. Um, and I asked the question again, uh, did you look a little too far ahead? Did you think the match was yours? And, and the psychology from you to go in there and have that true belief. Talk me through that. You never you never think the match is yours when you're playing against someone like Roger <laughs> Federer. You're never getting too far ahead of yourself. But I did feel really calm. Um, I felt very calm in the whole process at the Australian Open, like I did at the US Open, which is great because that's the first step. When, you, when you're calm and you're composed, you're thinking clearly and you're making the right decisions. And tennis is a lot about making the right decisions at the right time. So I did feel very calm. Uh, that night, 2-1, fifth set against Roger. The show courts still at the Australian Open are playing quite slow, in my opinion, a bit slower than the outside courts. And so there wasn't such a thing, especially when you've had your eye in for, you know, the better, the better you know, course of four hours. Your eyes in, and there wasn't such a thing as an easy hold. So I was very much aware that it was still a long way to go to the finish line. And uh, even at the end there, I played some great tennis to get myself in those positions. So I still wanted to continue doing that. And sometimes the toughest thing is, is running through the finish line against a player like Roger. So look, I came up a little bit short, and I was devastated at the end of the match, obviously. Whenever, it doesn't matter who you play, but whenever you're on the big stage and you put yourself in a position to win and you pull up short, it doesn't matter how you went about it, you're disappointed. Uh, a couple of days later, you could really look at yourself in the mirror. And something I pride about myself is the fact that when I walk on the court, I'm going to absolutely give it 100%. No questions asked. And, and if I can do that, and even if I pull up a little bit short and I look in the mirror and I say, you know what, I gave it absolutely everything. It didn't work out in the end. Maybe I could have played a little bit better in certain moments. Maybe, maybe I couldn't have. But the key thing is for me is the effort and, and you know, the dedication to the cause. And that was definitely a, another instance where I feel as if I, I did do that. I put my best foot forward and, and, I, and I did, um, you know, empty the tank out there. And, and if you can do that, you can live with yourself. And, and definitely I haven't really um, second-guessed that ever. So, look, it, it is what it is. It's another great memory against, you know, one of the greatest players. And it's one that, you know, I'll learn from and, and hopefully have a couple more before uh, my time's done. One of the things I, I, you know, really admire about you is is the positivity. And one of the hardest things, and, and you've touched on it, is um, when you lose a match like that, is absorbing that disappointment and finding a way to go back out and keep that motivation. But you, you still managed to do that. Obviously, you had that tear in your calf as well, so you had to recover from that. And then you, you went to the Davis Cup in Adelaide and really gutsy performance there to, to help us get through, particularly in that fourth rubber. Yeah, look, the, the tear wasn't ideal. I actually had a grade two tear, so that's pretty significant. Um, I probably wasn't quite ready to play Del Rey Beach or Acapulco, but for me, it was really important to get a match or two to come back and peak the Davis Cup, which is something that when I see that on the calendar, I want to play. I want to play for Leighton. I want to play for Rochi. I want to play for the boys in the team. I love that environment. And I had some pretty tough memories. Uh, I lost in the quarterfinals in a pretty pivotal match. Uh, in Madrid, I, I got a late call up and I went out there and I tried my hardest, but I pulled up short against a pretty informed Canadian team. So I had those memories and I saw this as an opportunity with Nick and, and Alex obviously not able to play. I saw this as an opportunity to really lead the team and it's something that 
I like to see myself thriving in that situation. Uh, you know, you want to be playing your best tennis in Davis Cup environments when the pressure's at its absolute high and when you've got your bench on the sideline and you're playing for them out there. So that was a really nice memory to have to, to kind of help the team and contribute the team to, to play the finals in Madrid. Hopefully uh, we still get there. I'm not sure. But it's really special when you get to celebrate with the boys and, and the team at the, end of the, and at the end of the tie. It's something that um, I didn't think originally that I'd ever get the chance to do, play, play for your country at Davis Cup, just because of the, the champions that have gone before me and the history that we have in that competition. Uh, is outstanding and you know there would have been times before my rank wouldn't have put me in that team but I've managed to to get that opportunity and and I'm just so grateful that that's my last memory of tennis so far during this this um, off period because if that doesn't motivate you to to keep going when you're not playing tennis I don't know what will it's it's a really special occasion for me and it's something that um, you know I just love being a part of, of, of that thing and I think Leighton's done a good job of of really inspiring the boys to, to, to get up for Davis Cup. And, and um, there's no greater leader, I think, than, than Leighton um, was when he played and also as a captain. And, yeah, I just, I just love being in the Davis Cup team. I'm, I'm very grateful that the boys give me that opportunity. Yeah, great words. I, I, love, your, I love your passion. I, I love the, the energy that uh, you bring to everybody. Um, in chatting to you, we would know you're in isolation. It, it, you've, you've got it covered. You've got good plans, good goals. And, uh, well, i, I got a feeling we're going to see us in the domestic tennis environment before we get on yeah. the international. And, and I hope we uh, both get there in person. It's been great chatting with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, mate. Always a pleasure.